What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Uh, still here in the book of Proverbs. Today, on July 10th, we're going to be going through Proverbs chapter 10. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, the body and soul. And if you haven't seen my last book of Enoch study, we got to look at the lake of fire. Um, this first death is just the body. Second death is body and soul in a lake of fire. But God loves us and he wants to save us. And he requires perfection in order to inherit his kingdom, in order to be with him. And none of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human. Faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, the death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross so that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. Most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means to turn away from your sins and turn to God. Turn away from your wickedness and turn to God. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that, and you ask him to forgive you, ask him to save you, and you truly mean it, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit is called a helper helps us in his, in his walk with him because it's a daily walk we we got to choose to follow him um the holy spirit gives you wisdom discernment power if you believe and you ask god to forgive you and ask him to save you he will forgive you he will give you the holy spirit and he will give you eternal life and the bible says we can't even imagine what god has prepared for those who love him can't even imagine it repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. That's, uh... Now let's get into uh, Proverbs 10. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son. And this is what it's all about through the Proverbs. About wisdom. And Jesus is wisdom. And about being wise. And if we go to Matthew 25... We see about the wise, wise virgins and the foolish virgins. They're all, all of them are believers, but only five are wise. Half are, half are wise, half are foolish. And we also see in other parables Jesus speaks, we see the wise and the foolish. And it goes back to Proverbs here with the wise and the foolish. And it boils down to following God and keeping his commandments. Because anyone, anyone can believe. Anyone can say I, say a prayer and, and believe. But if if you're still living in sin, if you're living in wickedness, then you're going to be considered foolish. And he will close the door on you. But here in Proverbs 10, we have... Uh, compares the, the wise to the foolish, the righteous to the unrighteous. A wise son... Makes a father glad. Let's be wise. Let's make our heavenly father glad. A wise son makes, his, makes a father glad. But a foolish son is a grief to his mother. Ill-gotten gains or treasures of wickedness, as the footnote says. Basically, money made in a, in a wicked way. Ill-gotten gains do not profit. But righteousness delivers from death. Hallelujah. Yahuwah will not allow the righteous to hunger. But he will reject the craving of the wicked. Poor is he who works with a negligent hand. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. Let's not be neg negligent with the opportunities and the things that he's given us and provided us with. Especially, especially the things of God. Poor is he who works with a negligent, negligent hand, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer 
is a son who acts wisely. But he who sleeps in harvest is a son who acts shamefully. So this is one of the many scriptures that mention harvest and summer as being the same thing. And the harvest, that's the time of the rapture. The time of the beginning of the end. He who gathers in summer is a son who acts wisely. But he who sleeps in harvest is a son who acts shamefully. We need to be doing God's work. We need to be doing His will. We need to wake up. We're living in the last days. And whether that means the last couple days or the last couple weeks or the last couple months or years. We're living in the last days. And we need to be about our Father's business. We need to not sleep and... And, um, and I don't mean don't sleep at all, but we need to be awake concerning the times and concerning um, the things of God. And not just uh, asleep to the things that are going on like most people are. Blessings. Actually, I'll just read that one more time. He who, he who gathers in summer is a son who acts wisely. But he who sleeps in harvest is a son who acts shamefully. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. But the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. The memory of the righteous is blessed. But the name of the wicked will rot. The wise of heart will receive commands. We need to allow God to correct us. Even through other people. The wise of heart will receive commands. But a babbling fool will be ruined. He who walks in integrity. Walks securely. He who walks in integrity walks securely. But he who perverts his ways. Will be found out. He who winks the eye. Causes trouble. And a babbling fool, or the foolish of lips, as it says here, will be ruined. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. But the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up strife. But love covers all transgressions. And we read this in the New Testament. Love uh, covers a multitude of sins. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all transgressions. On the lips of the discerning, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him who lacks understanding. Wise men store up knowledge. But with the mouth of the foolish... Ruin is at hand. The rich man's wealth is his fortress. But our fortress is God. The rich man's wealth is his fortress. The ruin of the poor is their poverty. The wages of the righteous is life. But the income of the wicked, punishment. The wages of the righteous is life, but the income of the wicked, punishment. He is on the path of life who heeds instruction. Again, we need to allow God to correct us. And whether that's whatever, whatever way that is, even through other people. He is on the path of life who heeds instruction. But he who ignores reproof or correction goes astray. He who conceals hatred has lying lips. And he who spreads slander is a fool. When there are many words, transgression is unavoidable. But he who restrains his lips is wise. 
And Jesus even said, let your words be yes, yes, or no, or no, no to whoever, whatever is beyond, whatever beyond this is sin. When, when there are many words, transgression is unavoidable. But he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The tongue of the righteous, his words, is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many through righteous words through the word of God the lips through wisdom through the the lips of the righteous feed many but fools die for lack of understanding Jesus is understanding but fools die for lack of understanding it is the blessing of Yahuwah the Lord that makes rich it's only by his blessing that we have anything and he had and he adds no sorrow to it. Hallelujah. Doing wickedness is like sport to a fool. And so is wisdom to a man of understanding. Doing wisdom, acting wisely to a man of understanding, a man of God, a man of Jesus. It's like doing wickedness is like a sport to like sport to a fool. Sport to a fool. And so is wisdom to a man of understanding. Hallelujah. What the wicked fears will come upon him. But the desire of the righteous will be granted. One more time. What the wicked fears will come upon him. But the desire of the righteous will be granted. When the whirlwind passes... And the whirlwind, that's a reference to Jesus when he comes on the clouds. If we go to Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel saw, saw uh, actually I'm not sure if it mentions whirlwind, but he saw a storm wind coming out of the south. And uh, a whirlwind is speaking about Jesus when he comes, the judgment of God. When the whirlwind passes, the wicked is no more. But the righteous has an everlasting foundation. Hallelujah. When the whirlwind passes, the wicked is no more. But the righteous has an everlasting foundation in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the lazy one to those who send him. Let's be about our father's business. Let's not be lazy. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes is like, so is the lazy one who, to those who send him. Like smoke to their eyes. The fear of Yahuwah, the fear of the Lord, prolongs life. But the years of the wicked will be shortened. The fear of Yahuwah prolongs life. But the years of the wicked will be shortened. The hope of the righteous is gladness. But the expectation of the wicked perishes. The hope of the righteous is gladness. But the expectation of the wicked perishes. The way of Yahuwah is a stronghold to the upright. His ways... It's a stronghold to the upright. The way of Yahuwah is a, is a stronghold to the upright, but ruin to the workers of iniquity, ruin to sinners, because the wages of sin is death. And breaking his way, his law, is sin. The righteous will never be shaken, but the wicked will not dwell in the land. The righteous, one more time, the righteous will never be shaken. Hallelujah. But the wicked will not dwell in the land. The mouth of the righteous 
flows with wisdom. But the perverted tongue will be cut out. The mouth of the righteous flows with wisdom. But the perverted tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous bring forth what is acceptable. But the mouth of the wicked, what is perverted. The lips of the righteous bring forth what is acceptable. But the mouth of the wicked bring forth what is perverted. And that's the end of Proverbs 10. See the contrast between the wicked and the righteous, the wise and the foolish. Let's walk in his ways. Let's be wise. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's walk in righteousness. Let's be prepared for the return of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let's preach the gospel. Let's shine his light. Let's loud, actions speak louder than words. Let's uh, walk, out, walk in his ways. And when people see that, we're shining his light. And... Um, and it attracts people to him. People are attracted to the light. Let's uh, shine his light and show his love in everything we do. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. God wants to save you. He did so much for you in order to offer you eternal life. And you just have to accept his free gift of salvation and turn to him. Choose to follow him and ask him to forgive you. That's the end of Proverbs 10. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.